Hello, here is where we will practice the Drake equation that I mentioned in, that I didn't mention, I taught you about in my last video. And if you don't know what the Drake equation is or you want to review, I am going to have you click on Carl and he will take you there. Okay? And let's click on Carl up here and I'm going to put an annotation on his face or on his entire body really and that will take you to my video on the Drake equation. Now, Let's start our practice, now that all of you people who have no idea what the Drake equation is, or have some idea, have gone. Let's go over the formula again. Number, and oh shoot, do I have any more Sharpies? I do not, nope. Um, N equals N star times F sub P times n sub e times f sub lowercase l times f sub i times f sub c times f sub uppercase l. So, stars, planets, earth-like, habitable, habitable planets, life actually arises, intelligent life, communication, Enough uh, ratio of a plant's life. Okay, so here is where we will. Let's just tear this page out. Nope, let's not. Here is. Okay, so there is our review. Now, here is what I have found. N. Star, which is the number of stars in our galaxy, is approximately 300 billion. Sorry, Carl. Billion. 300 billion. And we have F sub P. I'm not writing big enough. F sub P which is how many of those stars have planets. Um, I've read um, that it's about a third. So, 33%. And so B. I should make that approximate. There we go, because we don't know for sure. So B, B, the planets that are Earth-like, I'd say, since I read somewhere that about a tenth of all planets are Earth-like or something of that. I'm going to put that as 10%. Um, I think that's from the New York Times, actually. And then here's when I started guessing. Um, F sub little l. Percentage of planets where life arises. I just said 25%. Say it's possible for it to have life, but only one in four of those actually get life. Now, F sub I, which is intelligent life. I said of all the plants that get life, only one in five actually get intelligent life. So maybe they'll just be dinosaurs their whole time, and then the planet dies. So that's 20%. Say one in five of those planets have dinosaurs, then they have intelligent creatures that can do math and such. And then F sub C is percentage of those who can actually communicate with us. And if I can do math, I just have to wait long enough until I can do radio astronomy, right? So unless there's some cataclysm, shouldn't most of us, most of us being civilizations, be able to create radio astronomy? So I put that at about 80%. Then F sub large L, and C, let's see, I'm going to have, this is really, really pending. So, for example, if we were to stay the most powerful species on Earth until the sun burns us to a crisp, that would be 62.5% 
of the planet's life. And so that's so that's our equation. That's with the humans in it. Because life arose relatively quickly. Once the Earth cools down, you've got, boom, you got microbes. Boom, I mean, of course this takes a couple, what, a billion years or something. But, you know, relatively quickly you've got microbes. And you've got, you know, fish or trilobites. And then you've got fish. And then you've got amphibians. And you've got reptiles. And you've got dinosaurs. And then you've got rodents. And then you've got apes. And then you've got humans. So it actually happens pretty fast. So, um, we, we've been here for, you know, 38% of the, we've, we've been evolving for about, you know, 30% of the planet's life, and now, now we are going to, if, if humans stay, we're going to eat up 62%, which is very, very good. That means, you know, we will be here for more than half the planet's life. And then we'll be burned to a crisp and all die. Unless we travel to other planets and such. So, let us do the equations. Okay. So, number of stars is 300 billion. Carl, stop running away. Times. 0 0.33 for 33% of the stars that have planets, times 0 0.1 for the percent of those planets that are Earth-like, times 0 0.25 chance that life arises, times 0 0.2, which is intelligent life arises, times 80% or 0 0.8, and then the chance that we develop enough we can communicate times 0.62.5% or how about just 62%. Okay, there we go. Now let's do the calculation. That will be... Let's do our handy dandy calculator. 300... Uh, 300... Oh goodness, 300. Let's start over. 300. 3,000. Oh gosh, okay. 300 times 1 billion. So we'll do times 10 to the 6, 10 to the 9, times 10 to the 9th. Yay! I'm so smart. Thank you. That times 0.33. Times 0.1 times 0.25 times 0.2 times 0.8 times 0.62. Ooh, that's huge! That is humongous! Okay, let's write this out. We've got. Whew! That is insane. We have. There you go. If you want to see that. But I can't. Um, oopsies, let's go for the UV flashlight, two, four, five, five, two, then two, three, four, boop, one, two, three, boop, 245 million, million civilizations are on the Milky Way waiting to communicate with us. That is Pretty awesome. Either that or they, they are they're either waiting or they're already dead. But that's still 204. If half of those guys knocked it over again, if half of those guys have already died. No, not. No. If half of those guys have already died, you're still stuck with like, yeah. 245 divided by 2. 122 million people. Or civilizations, not people. Civilizations with 7 billion people each. Or aliens, or whatever. Well, maybe even more. Maybe less. But that is a huge number right there. 245 million. Now, let's say... This, this, is, this is what I have trouble with. This is... 
how much, um, you know, the lifespan of the planet. But say life takes a while to arise. Say it takes a couple billion years. Say it eats up a lot of time. So I'm going to go back with my calculator here. And before I multiply by 0.62, we'll take that. Oh, is it clear here? Oof. 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 You, okay. So, say it's only there for a fifth of the planet's life. Times 0.2. Wow! We still have a large amount of planets here. So, so we're going to put this... Gosh, my Sharpie, my poor Sharpie. So we're going to go down to here. Times 0 0.2 equals 7, 9, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, boop, boop. 79 million, which is still a lot. And yes. You can say I completely overestimated a lot of things. Because this point eight, this could be a point one, and that would change a lot. This point two five could be a point one as well. You could have this be also a point one, and that would be that would divide by two, wouldn't it? But so these are very optimistic guesses. Carl Sagan, for example, came up with ten as one of them, but I didn't because I like to be optimistic because I am in favor of search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI. Go SETI. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> but y you can get a lot less if you play around with this. I encourage you guys. You guys should play around with this stuff, because it's, it's sort of fun to see what answers you come up with on your own. You know, don't change the number of stars in the Milky Way to, like, five. But, you know... Keep that 300, 200 billion is the number. I went with the higher one. Um, and just play around with this. Look at, look at different websites. Like some of these I got from the New York Times. Some of these I had to resort to like blogs. So that, that's also a problem. I sometimes I resort to blogs and that was not good because blogs don't trust them. And sometimes Wikipedia helped me. Also, don't trust Wikipedia. Find something else. But I was pressed for time. But, yeah, there you go. That is my take on what, how many civilizations are in the Milky Way at about this time. I will see you next video, where I will discuss something probably completely different. Goodbye.